Hello today and welcome back to Go On The Run and today I want to finally address this whole internal packaging stuff. We saw like two videos ago that I introduced a internal and then in the last video I sort of covered um, if you have a local package that you're developing, I forgot a module that you're developing, why do you need to do the replace because I thought that that needed some more attention. Now um, I want to complete talking about the other part of that, which is using internal packages. So before we get into the code, let me show you a little diagram. So I'll try to illustrate what is it that we're talking about. And so this diagram looked pretty confusing, but I'm going to explain to you. And we're not going to replicate this exactly in code. We'll come somewhat a little bit close and close to this. Um, but at least at the end of it, you're going to be able to understand everything that's depicted here. And not only because I'm going to explain it now, but also after we do a code exam to do the code exercise. All right. So imagine that we want to develop a module and this module is going to have the name, you know, and be stored as location member for a module name. It's the repo, the path, and then the actual name of the module. So we could say this module name is awesome, but this is the full location of where you'd be able to find it. And so we would expect that when we go to initialize that module file, we'll be given it that, you know, HTTP example that come for slash users for slash awesome to the go mod init command. And so in our go that mod file, we'll see module space and then this, right? So that's fine. So that's where the module is. Now remember module, a module is a collection of packages. Those packages can be packages that represent an application or just simply, you know, piece of the code that you can reuse and pull into application. We talked about all of this already a few videos back. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the same thing again. So let's say that within this module, I do have an application. So I create a command directory and I have two commands. So two applications that are executable. So app, app one and app two. Now we know that oh, each one of these applications is going to have a main that go file. So I'm going to just put it on app one for now because try to minimize the amount of noise and that little things that you have to see on the screen. But you can imagine that app two is going to have the same thing. Now we want to be able to have um, break up our code, of course, and that's where we have packages and so on. Remember, this is a module. So now all we can have are other packages. So I have a storage package and that's just a directory. Now, the thing with Go, as you know, that I'll, to create a package, you just really create a, a directory, and within there, you can put files that have that name. The only exception to this is when you use main. So I could have a directory called app1, but my main that Go file actually says that, I'll, oh, package main, and that's okay. But if you have this directory called storage, and you put a file within here, let's call it a.go, somebody would expect you to give it the name um, the package to be storage because if you don't do that when it comes to importing it can be somewhat of a mess and so best you keep it that way but we're not going to put any files directly as, as any go source file directory we create a next another directory called file and within this we'll put some go source file right so let's say this type of storage is storage that is going to be represent file storage, okay? As opposed to memory storage or database storage or, you know, non -SQL, uh, no SQL type storage like Mongo or Redis or something. So that's what I mean by file. I don't mean a literal file as in a source file, but type of storage here. And so this abstract how we store things to a file. Okay, well, we know that all, any one of our commands here can import, um, you know, things from file. And I'm going to show you in code how you can go to any directory that you have a package. And if you want to know how to what's the import path or the import string, how you can use the go dot command to tell you how to import that. I'll show you that. So maybe the other thing that we really we want to do is to have some piece of code that we want to keep hidden, which means that if somebody were to import our module awesome right now, they wouldn't be able to import anything on the command because those are applications. They can't import our application, but they can import storage and use our file, right? So they can include import the storage package slash file sub package within storage. And so they can use it. So to use 
file from some external application, they would just have, you know, HTTP example.com forward slash loser awesome forward slash storage forward slash file, and they'd be able to use that file package. But let's say we want to implement some other piece of code that we don't want anyone to be able to import because they, could, they have access to our uh, module. Well, all we have to do is create a directory call internal. And so you could think of this now as an internal package and anything between under here. You don't have to be one package. It could be multiple. It's just a directory. So you can have any directory structure you want under here. So to keep things simple, I just have one, literally one directory, but it could be any directory structure, you know, in terms of it could fan out. That's what I mean. And now everything on the internal is internal to our module only, and it cannot be used by anything outside of it. Even if they import it, they wouldn't get the code. So it means all the command stuff, they can import anything that's on the internal, regardless of how deep it is. Why? Because internal the directory or that internal package is at the same level or it has it's sim the same parent as command. So therefore, anything under that command can also import anything from it. So as an example, app one here could use everything that's inside of internal. Same thing with app two, but I'm not gonna draw that line again. We're gonna keep the lines to the minimum. Now, let's say we came up with some fancy internal storage thing that um, we want to keep private implementation of this because this is our secret sauce. And so we want to put it, of course, on the storage. And that simply means that we create another internal directory. Notice internals doesn't have to be at the top level. They can be at any level. And so what this simply means now is that if someone tries to import our storage, they can only have access to file. They would not have access to this other thing that's on the internal. Like they wouldn't have access to int package two. Notice that our commands app one and app two, they too do not have access to internal package two. And the reason they don't have access to it is because their parent, right, is not at um, the same parent of internal. So the parent of internal is storage, but command one and command two, their parent is command, not storage. But because internal on the storage, and file do share the same parent, which means file parents is a storage internal on the right hand side there. Guess what? File can access anything inside of that internal storage, right? So you have to be careful with this. And I'm going to show in our code example, oh, you could leak information. If you're not careful, file, since it can access anything here, it could turn around and expose things that you don't intend to be. Um, thing, but that would be a deliberate action on your part, right? Or whoever coded this. But so what this tells us is you, somebody could import our module awesome, still have access to storage and our file storage, but not to this internal storage to package that we have here. Final example here to run this out is that again, just like how storage can have its own internal. So app one might say, oh, you know what? I have some internal implement, some implementation details that I like to keep private. And who is it keeping it private from? Well, app two, maybe app two is a little bit sneaky. So it wants to keep some internal implementation private from app two. And so maybe that's why it's going to, um, you know, create another directory here within their call internal and, you know, maybe call it internal package three. So, um, this sort of thing um, can be done at any level. And so with that said, I don't think you have to go too crazy with using internal, but it's good to know. Um, there might be situations which you want to do it. And so um, definitely we will go over example, like I say, but hopefully with this illustration, you have the idea. So now let's jump into the code. All right. So let me start off where some where we left off sort of. And so we'll use example five, the last one that we did and part five as a base for what we're going to do today. So I'll do copy this recursively and episode seven. That's sort of like we're doing in this miscellaneous thing. Example five, like I said, and I want it to be called six. All right. So this is going to give me all that code. And so if I change to this directory here, 
I should see that and I'm gonna clean up and do this. Now, because of uh, what we are talking about this internal thing, I think I can make it pretty simple by just sticking to an application and showing you some packages within that application. And the same thing when I demonstrate the issue or how you can make things private, the same thing is gonna apply if you have a module and you made things private. Like nobody can import those private the packages on those the private, um, the internal, right? So when I said private, I'm gonna use private and internal synonymously. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let me just get rid of modules because like I say, everything we're gonna do today, we're gonna be able to understand with this example. So again, clean up. And I think this is big enough for everyone to see. Hopefully, um, even if you're on a small device, it should be okay. Of course, the larger your device is, this should be fine. All right, so let's do bring up our Visual Studio Code Editor. Oh, and I need to go into this application directory because VS Code wants me to be able to be in the directory where I have a module file defined. So clean up once again, and then I come here. Now, if you look, at what our module is called. It's called this thing, and that's fine. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna ignore everything else in there for now. And what I'm gonna do is go to main, and of course this is complaint because we no longer have the other module that we, we are using, the external module, so we're gonna get rid of this for now. So like I said, everything I'm gonna show you with internal packages, right? This is how to keep code private gonna apply also for modules. So let's just say um, I wanted to add some code here. So let's say I'm gonna use a package and let's say I'll call it package P K G A and I'm gonna call it a.go, right? And so we have package and we know that's gonna be called that. And maybe I have a constant in here and let's call it, what do I call it, secret? Let's just call it secret. Now, of course, it's not really secret, but I have public, and then this is a value from, um, you know, our application one slash PK package A, okay? So that's what it is, all right. So of course, we know that we can import this for use. So if I do fmt.print line, I should be fine like this. And so it imports this from um, our module so this is our module part of your memoir this is our module path okay and so this package within our module and we're going to all that so this is going to work there's no warning here or anything i'm not going to even waste time running this this i just want to start from where we know so what if we wanted to have something that was internal so let's say i created something like this internal and then i do that and then I'm going to say uh, this is maybe PKG, let's see, um, stuff, uh, PKGB, um, or maybe let's call it secret, secret one, and then A that go. Okay, so now within here, of course, this is a package, and let's call it back secret one, of course. And then let's do a constant and secrets. Now, how should you be able to import things from here? Now, if you're having trouble trying to figure out what import statement you should use, uh, here's a tip. What you can do is you can CD down to that directory, internal stuff, secret one. And then when you get there, you can say go doc and then do this. And so what this gives you is the import statement. And so here we can see it says, oh, no module file. Okay, so ta -ta -da -da. We're, I don't trust this right now because um, this is still looking at some old stuff. So let's do this. Let me go get rid of all of this bit. I can delete this manually, but if I don't want to mess with this file, what I can do is I can say go mod, um, and then I can say tidy, and this should get rid of anything that I don't need. And you can see it behind the screen scenes it did that. The other thing is I could clean up my um, cache directory by saying go clean, and that's gonna clean up some things for me. But the other thing I can do, is if I look at the help for this, 
uh, go help clean. Um, there's a minus cash um, option I can pass. It's a clean cash. Causes clean to remove the entire bill cash directory. So I can do go clean minus minus cash and clean that up. Okay. So now the reason why I did that is because I didn't like the error message I was getting here. So I want to clean that up. So let's try this again. So if I do this, notice how those error message went away and now it actually tells me that if you want to import this package and use it secret one this is what you really need to do so i copy this because this is how i would use it and it of course showed me you know what, what i can import there was public so i go back here i go to main and now if i do this paste this here and then I have another print statement, empty that print line, and then I do secret one, that public, notice how that's already been offered to me. Well, that public one, I need secret one, that secret. Oh man, this is, um, I have um, this thing, um, tab nine installed, it's supposed to help you write code, but man, it gets in the way more than it actually helps sometimes. So. I'm trying it out, but uh, I don't know, sometimes it's just not annoying. So notice I can access secret from this internal package. This package is secret. One is the name of the package, and it's buried down there in a directory stuff, and then it's also, um, you know, there's internal. And so, of course, if I want to run this now, if I clean up here, I'm in this directory. If I do go run and I do this, it should run and you can see I got the secret that's buried in there. So this doesn't prove to you yet that just internal stuff really works. Um, this is only saying that, oh, oh I could put stuff in the directory, big deal. Um, my pack package just have, is really nested. So let me show you another example that show you this internal stuff actually works. So let me um, now try to go um, and put something in another directory. So I'll put something and call it um, some other last internal. Actually, I don't even, yeah, I could do that. Internal, and then I can do secret to that A that go. And so now in this package, this is going to be package two. And then we can do const secret so that's where it is now let's run the same trick again and let's go back up let's go into some pop 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 here and then i'll clean up and i'll do go doc and then this and now it's giving me the import part path to get this so i grab this and i go back to main and I stick it in there. And now I try to call secret to that secret. All right, trying to use it. There it is, secret to. And I have gotten the import path the same way I did before. This is says, this is how you import it. This is the whole module name and then the path to this package. And yet, it's telling me I can't import it. And to confirm this, if you don't worry about what it's saying and how it can, you know, git can import or whatever, you can come to the command line if you like. And let's try and rerun this command. So git um, go run, run. And if I do this, now you can see it says use of internal package dot 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 not allow. So this message is actually pretty clear. It's telling you that though. This is not allowed because it's an internal package. And I'll show you that though we can get around this by having someone who is a leaker, you know, who can access secrets, get to this. So what are the rules then for being able to access something that's internal? Why did it work here when we had secret one that was an internal package, but not here? The rule is that only code that's in the same 
parent directory of the internal directory get imported. Pretty simple, right? So if you have an internal directory, so let's take a look at that. I'm going to do a tree command and let me do this. So when I do this tree command, as you can see, this internal directory is within this directory, which is our current directory. And main that go is also in that current directory. So the internal stuff and the code that wants to import it, in this case, main that go, they have the same parent as internal. So therefore, go can use it. Similarly, package A would be able to use the secret stuff also because package A parent is the same parent as internal. That's all. Now, when you look at this guy, what is the internal, what's the parent for internal? The parent for internal is other. Well, that other is not the same parent as any one of these things outside. So package A couldn't use secret two and main could not use secret two either. But who can? Anything that share a parent with other, right? So for us to have a leaker then, let's just put somebody in the other directory and make them very talkative. And so we'll put a new guy in there and we'll call him, let's say, leaker slash a that go. I mean, just give him his file name and packages leaker. And we'll put a function in here, function get secret. Of course, it has to be, you know, something that we can publicly. So get secret returns a string that goes to show that this leaker can get to it. And the leaker can get to it because, let's run tree command again. The leaker can import the secret because the leaker shame the same parent as, you know, this internal command. Now, if our um, internal directory was one level deeper, the leaker couldn't get to it. Ah, I spelled that incorrectly. Leaker. So that is the only rule really is to this is you can use the internal directory. The only code that imported is, are the, is the code that share the same parent of um, the internal directory. That's it. And so now we can now go back to main and main can exploit the fact that, you know what? I know that I can get to two secret two directory directly, but I can get to leaker, which isn't, you know, which I have access to it. And there you go. Leaker, why can't I type? Leaker that gets secret. And we can see that that's available to us. And we already know that leaker have access to the secret. So if we clean up and we do a go run again, we can see that we actually have access to that secret now, even though we couldn't get to it directly. directly. But you can, they can't stop you from doing this. I mean, you have to be careful. They already give you a mechanism for keeping code secret or private from other packages. If you get around it, well, of course, that's your own doing. So I'll wrap this up pretty soon. So what about if we had a directory that was below leaker. Um, let's call it leaker2 because this, we're very creative with our names over here. Leaker2 and a that go. And package leaker2, sorry about the basic names. And let's do get um, function. And I try saving it, of course. Let's do it this way. Let's try to import it. I don't want to do it that way. Let's go back here. Grab this import statement. Paste it here. And now we're importing this. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to return the secret itself. It's a secret. All right. And now if I go back to my main, first of all, we don't see any error message. But I do leaker2 and I do get secret. But of course, leaker2 is where leaker2 is buried inside of leaker. Okay, how do I know this? Well, one, the directory, but what we can do is we can kind of go back here and we can go here, go back up a little bit, and we can go to leaker 
and then again and then remember if we do go doc and this we can get the full path so full path to some other you know leak or leak or two and so here we are and notice i do not get an error message and of course if we clean up and we do go run we can see that oh, we're still getting to that secret and for, for us to understand why we go back to tree and we can see that leaker 2 if even though it's not direct parent but you can see there's a parent in or grandparent at least that's in common with the internal so that is why leaker can get to leaker 2 can also get to this secret message right so I, hopefully that makes sense if it doesn't make sense please let me know okay hopefully that makes sense i know this is sort of contrived but i was trying to illustrate it all right leave in a comment let me know what you think and um so all this stuff that internal and so on if you need to do some reading up on it um here's where you find that let's say you go to godev or even golang.org and you click on docs and then you scroll scroll down and you'll get to this section here uh, da, 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 command documentation and this is documentation all the go commands and so of course um, the one we're going to be looking for is um, let's say go command and you click on that over here you'll see something that says internal directories and this now explain how this internal directory should work and it kind of shows you how you know what we can import what and so on now it's very skinny on the example but hopefully that will help you along with what i've done the other thing is um here is the go like proposal that introduced that um internal directory and this was done way back in go 1.4 so go 1.5 onward have so full support i am currently running go 117.5 so this is pretty you know like you know 12 releases back you gotta say or even more right because there were some minor releases two bug fixes so yeah so it's been around for a while so um hopefully between the documentation and my example you'll have a pretty good idea of how internal works but still let me know if for some reason these things don't do it for you and then i could revisit it all right as usual if you're still here at the end of this of me showing all this and you haven't subscribed please do subscribe if you're subscribed already thank you very much um hit the notification bell so you know when i post videos leave a comment um hopefully i responded or at least replied to all the comments i've seen so far and if you're in a position to support the channel financially definitely look at some of the ways here with patreon or my digital tokens um address if there's a token that um, you have that I don't have, like Solana or something, just let me know. I pretty much um, can pretty much get an address for any, anything. But otherwise, take care, enjoy the material, and see you in the next video. Stay safe. Bye.